Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Spare Change, episode 16. So today we are really going to dig a little deep and really talk about what is leadership, you know, and not that textbook stuff and all that stuff, but really, 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 what is leadership to you? What is leadership? So now, see, Barry, you want to take that? Sure. So, you know, we came up with a bunch of stuff, but what I was really thinking about was how leaders, how great leaders sometimes cannot be replicated. Um, one of the things that I think about is like all the leaders that like conquered the world or after, a, after they died, the aftermath turns into like separation and, and brokenness. So we're just going to talk about leadership and how it ebbs and flows and what, what, uh, what, what, our, what our spare change is on, on leadership today. All right. So who wants to start it off? Well, I have a question. Have any of you guys ever held leadership roles? Okay, I'll start. Go. Leadership is about guidance, being influential, being strong, um, being able to take initiative, um, being a motivator, being fearless, like all these different things play in for me um, as far as being a leader. Is that the question that you're asking? Yeah, but I want to know like, okay, in, in what area of your life do you feel like you're a leader or have you been a leader? Because I have an idea okay. for you and I'm just going to say, I feel like you're the leader of your family, mm -hmm. of your current immediate family. I feel like you're the the shot caller, you're the leader, you're even with um even with your your circumstance. Cause I don't want to, you know, say your business. Yeah. But. Um, yeah, I would say so. Um, leadership in my family. Um, I feel like there's leadership in my role in at work. Um, mm -hmm. I think sometimes even, you know, I think everybody and my friendship plays a role in leadership itself, but at some point, everyone takes a turn in being able to share that leadership. I think even in a community, you know, there's a lot of roles that I may play as far as leadership, even with people that I may not know that I may just have whatever for, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I feel like for myself, I was thinking about this the other day, I think, at a young age, I had to take the leadership role in my family too, because we're, you know, we moved from Japan when I was in like at, at the end of kindergarten and me and my brother were the ones that learned English first and mm -hmm. I was the oldest. And so like, even for my parents, I had to, you know, many Im immigrant children like have to translate for their families, have to navigate the system for the whole family. And so I feel like at a young age, I had to kind of take on that role, like kind of parentified role. Like I remember like in third and fourth grade, I would go to parent conferences and I would translate exactly what the teacher was saying for my mom, which was a, kind of a weird thing for me, you know, when you're little, like you have to translate exactly what the teacher's saying about you. And so I feel yeah. like uh, even that now, is interesting. as an adult, like I have to, I always have to have a plan because I didn't have a plan when I was little. Like I had to make the plan for my family. Oh. And so now even today, I feel like I get stressed out or like anxious if I don't have a plan. And I feel like that's where it comes from. from my I completely empathize with you, Haru. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like I was the first grandchild in my immediate family on my mom's side. And that's who I was majority of the time. And I was the, so my mom's firstborn. So I felt like I got to experience a lot of things first. Um, but even like, you know, when you go through trauma, divorce, like that was, that was my parents' story. Even at one point, I felt like parentified because I was taking care of my mom, like when she would be sad or um, if she was too sad because she was going through depression or whatever, that had to find my own way to like school by asking my uncle, like, hey, can you give me a ride? But like, I remember doing that at age five, like already having to, you know. Yeah. And so just like, I, I, I remember translating for my grandma before, but my mom took that role very much like you. And I remember her talking about it, how sometimes you think you're, you were 
forced into taking the lead. Now, I don't know if that's considered leadership, but I definitely know what that feels like too. And then I think also when I was going to, um, when I started, when I got into college, that was the other thing. Like no one knew how to navigate, like how was I going to pay for it? How, where, who was going to, how was I going to live and whatnot? And it just, it was super uh, stressful. But as far as like, for me, like when you talked about the plan, I was like, that's how come I became so controlling too. Like uh, controlling with myself. Like I couldn't let myself fail a class. Um, mm-hmm. I couldn't, you know, I've just, I felt like I didn't have the luxury to just let up. And so then I used to have people tell me all the time, like, why, you know, why, are you, why do you seem like you're always on the go, like for your life? Like you, you never slow down, you never take a break. You, you know, I don't know that I was planning things correctly, but I definitely was like, had a tight grasp on them. Me so, too. Yeah. But I, again, I don't know that that makes, you know, cause we're talking about leadership now, what makes a good leader? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Nelsie, I don't know if you have any. Yeah, no, I wanted to talk about that side of it too. Cause I think my leadership style and my leadership has changed and evolved. Mm-hmm. But one of the main things that I resonate with both your stories is that I had to do the same thing because my um, when I was little, it was chaotic. And so I walked my sister to kindergarten when I was in first grade. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was around the corner, but, you know, like little things like that. Sometimes my mom had to leave us alone because she had worked, you know what I mean? And my sisters were dealing with their own families mm-hmm. um, because my, you know, like my family started very young having children. So my mom was 15. My older sister was 18 and my middle sister was 16, uh, 15 too Mm -hmm. also but she had him at 16 and so like just a lot of care like we always had to like I always felt like I couldn't just play all the time it was like gotta take care of this gotta do this gotta do that and so like now in in my leadership style I want to take care but also that sometimes that doesn't work and Mm -hmm. so you have to understand what type of leadership the person needs in order to support uh, a good program or support a family, whatever the leadership style is, right? Um, I think also when I think about leadership and like I I see all three of you, I feel like we have a very um, intense leader, like everybody is a cook in this kitchen And so like we all have to figure out and navigate each other so that feelings don't get hurt. Right. Or like things don't get moved when they shouldn't be moved or shouldn't shift. And so it's like a, it's like a, it's like, when do I need to follow? When do I need to lead? Right. And it's like, not even in your brain, it's like symbiotic with the relationships you have. And I think sometimes we forget how to be followers and I think it's just as important to be a follower and a, and a leader you mm-hmm. know I think it's really important to do both because I've been in that game where I needed to do both and I my life got infinitely better when I knew when to shift from leadership to follower and um and that's the dialogue that I, that's the kind of question that I have is like do you, does everybody know when to follow and when to lead? And has it gotten you in trouble? I feel like you reminded me of, of a podcast I was listening to from Brene Brown with her daring, daring leadership. I think it was like the first two episodes. She describes how, like she was talking about organizations, for example, but I feel like this can translate into families and into communities. She said something like, sometimes people and it reminded me of your follow when to follow when to lead like sometimes people you're either trying to you either want people to fit in or but the better thing is you want people to feel like they belong exactly and so then if there's like a collaborative a creative approach then sometimes you know whether or not you're the boss or whatever or the leader 
or the supervisor, you can, if it's coming from a place of like wanting to belong a part of something, then you can step back, right? Like it's easier to step back and say, okay, like this is my strength. So then you kind of rise up if it's not. And then, but if it's, if it's more about fitting in, I think that's where you get, then maybe you're just like kind of in your corner, like, okay, well, I just have to, I just have to take instructions and that's it. Mm. Right. Um, or I just have to let, I just have to delegate and that's it. I just right. have to leave them. Right. Um, she also, she, she also talked about something that I felt like was super big was she, she talked about um, different reasons that communities or organizations don't thrive um, when, when there's bad leadership. Uh, and, and then something about like guilt and shame, like, are you leading with guilt and shame? And sometimes mm -hmm. people don't realize that they are. And she was like talking about the invisible the invisible um what does she call it we like when you like if I approach you as a boss and I say something like we feel that we here feel that you need to make a change with x y and z or you know it's been it's been brought to our attention our attention immediately yeah. you're wondering who's the we who's the are who are these invisible good like <laughs> people yes and then she so I feel like shame and guilt is um what contributes to bad leadership um, I, don't, I know I went somewhere different, but I was uh, thinking about that. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, one of the things that I was thinking, Chris, about that is like how, like you've been successful as a leader in a place for a very long time. What keeps your leadership fresh, right? Also you, Haru, because you've been there the same long too. Hmm. So what keeps your leadership fresh and how do you see yourself in the future? One I didn't feel like I was a good leader. I'll tell you why. Because initially when I was kind of like, D can you do this? Catering. It, well, it, okay. So when I was offered the position. Oh, okay. And, but with anything, I even, even before this position, just even in general, I was always either my, like, for example, my family would be like, you're super bossy. Watch, you're going to end up running a company. Yeah, you true. tell the kids, like all the grandkids, you tell the kids what to do, how to do it, and your way is the right way. But then I, I would think about that at night and it would hurt me because I'm like, I don't want to come off as bossy. I don't, I don't, am I doing this? I'm not realizing it. Like, it's not good. In my, in my, and then gradually I learned that my people pleasing skills and the ability to be, to give you mm -hmm. a directive was being seen as like, oh, leadership. But to me, that's not necessarily leadership. Mm -hmm. And so then when I first took a leadership style like quiz, I ended up finding out that I'm an equalizer. And then I took one <laughs> earlier this morning and it said that I have steward, I'm a steward leader. And then another one that said I'm a democratic leader. But it also gave me my weaknesses with that. A steward mm. leader, a democratic leader. Like I like to ask now like how everyone feels about this but i'll still make the the call, the call. at the end of the day yeah um i forgot yeah. your question oh oh <laughs> no. how do how do how does it work i think yeah how do you keep it fresh how do you i well one i try to read i try to listen to podcasts to keep it fresh but i think that i just never lose sight that we're human beings mm -hmm. and everyone has stuff happening so my relationships with people that I'm trying to lead mean more to me than the goal the goal second for me mm. and I don't necessarily know that that's a good thing but it's like because you can't get to a goal if you don't have the the people right behind right. it so I feel like you have to take care of the people first and then that the goal sense. comes second mm. So that's that's a very a la Michael Scott. <laughs> <laughs> what does he say? What does he say? He goes, I'd rather be I'd rather be I'd rather be feared no for how like, much people love me. Yeah, he's like, Would you rather be feared or would you rather be loved? I'd rather I want people to be scared of how, how much, much they love, love, love me. me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like those things, right? And yeah. Because 
Yeah, with you too, Haru, you've been a leader for a long time, almost more than half of your career, I think, because both of you got you both of you got pegged early to become leaders. And mm -hmm. I learned a lot. I learned a lot of valuable things. And I think about that time because I was incubating as a leader. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so I did the same things you you both were doing when I went moved over to FSP because I wanted people to like me. I like I like what you said right there that you were incubating because my theory about leadership is that I yeah. feel like I think everybody has the ability to be a leader with whatever their, their gifts are. But I think a lot of people are incubating, yeah. either incubating or suppressing it. Or, or, or fearing, right? It's right. that fear and shame, right? Or that guilt and shame. Like, I'm not good enough. I can't lead. And that's how I felt for a long time. Because, you know, before I came to Sharp, I was, I was tr trying a lot of different hats. And I, run, and I desperately wanted to run something. Like, I wanted to do my own thing. And I just, instead, I came upon this thing, like, you need to follow. And so I ended up getting a job where I had to, like, literally listen to somebody else. And I hadn't done that in a long time, especially as a social worker. But I think um, what I'm trying to say is, like, so does everybody know what their leadership style is now? And, like, how do you maintain that? And how... How are you growing from that, I guess? I can share a little bit about my leadership philosophy. So the, I found this maybe five or six years ago. It's, it's a book called My Dear Friends in America, written by Daisaku Ikeda. He's like a Buddhist philosopher. Oh, cool. But in one of this, in one of the books, where is the page? Um, it talks about on page 473, it talks about an organization where all take responsibility. And so it in the beginning, they about a call uh, written by Velasco and Steyer, the fight of the buffalo soaring to excellence, learning to let employees lead. Based on this book, they found that um, in a buffalo herd, all the individuals follow the lead buffalo. They go wherever the buffalo wants mm -hmm. to do. And in other words, they merely wait for instructions of the leader. When human organizations follow this model, they become an unthinking herd, unable to adapt to changing times. Such organizations travel, of course, so to inevitable decline. And then they talk about a far more successful type of organization. The book's author proposed a model based on the image of a flock of geese. Uh, the flock, they fly in a V form formation and with the role of the lead geese or lead goose changing frequently as different geese take turns. It's a model in which everyone takes responsibility, everyone is equal and everyone unites solidly for a shared objective. Um, Do they share in the leadership? Do they share in the leadership? Yeah, according to the book that. Yeah. And then, um, so based on this first book, um, Daisaku Ikeda, he says, based on their conclusions, we can summarize the following as some important guidelines for leaders. Number one, create an environment where each person wants to take leadership and responsibility. Number two, learn yourself and encourage others to do the same. This process of continual learning by all parties is a key to success. And then number three, realize that constructive change in your organization begins with you, the leader changing first. So these three like key points have kind of been my leadership motto philosophy for the last, you know, however many years. Because um, I've been at many organizations where I see the leader and I was like, I never want to take a leadership position because they look, you know, really stressed out or they're mm -hmm. really like, I don't know, I don't want to be that burnt out being a leader you know, when I see some organizations and then like, I would never want to follow a leader that doesn't want to change or doesn't want to reflect, doesn't want to take responsibility. Like I need a person to lead. If I'm going to follow somebody, I need them to like do it too. Like if they're asking me to do something, I, I hope that they'll actually do it too. Got it. So I, I was saying, um, I took the test that Crystal was talking about earlier because one of our directors, you know, asked us to take it. And I don't mm -hmm. remember exactly what the word was, but I remember one of the traits that I have was I, I want to make sure everyone's like part of the community, um, which is interesting because once you're like in my community, like, for example, if I'm in a certain program, I'm very protective of you and I don't want to let any other people in. Like, I remember, like, when I was still at the program that Crystal was in, 
like we'd have this little snack box, right? Where people can have snacks from our department. This is a true story. And it's specifically said for, you know, whatever department I was working in. And then, you know, we share the kitchen with other people and random other people from other programs would come and take the snacks. And I would get so irritated because I was like, you're not part of our family. Stop going into our cabinet to get our stuff. Like I would get so irritated when random people would eat our snacks. I was like, does it say your program? I don't think so. It was not random people. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was a few select people. But it, it would get me so irritated. But it's like, it's snacks. Oh. It's fine. Like, they just want some snacks. Let them have it. But I get so annoyed. I get so, like, protective. I'm and like, then I would be like, yeah, take some. He Take as many as you. Not caring what program. My- and I could see, I could see her really like, you need to stop. You need to. <laughs> I was like they're not part of our family my Stop favorite feeding them my Stop favorite was like them. oh can i have all these and uh, oh i remember <laughs> all of them no I- it says take <laughs> one i know right oh i can so like people would just eat when when you know when when funds got tight all those <laughs> snacks were gone dog it was funny That's true. And it's funny because I would clean out my like cabinet time to time at home um, depending on if I was like I would go on this like crazy binges of like I'm gonna eat healthy and clean and nothing processed so then I would bring all like the Oreos and stuff to work and then put it in the little snack thing. Be gone. <laughs> Question for everybody is what what is your call to leadership? Why do you think you've been called to lead? Mm, that's a deep question yes it is <laughs> i can start if you want sure so you guys should both all think about it but you know my call to leadership i i think i've i was called as a very very young person because i remember always wanting to lead and never wanting to follow i always went to the beat of my own drum and um i didn't really actually learn to follow until i was in my 20s did you though? Did you learn to follow <laughs> with your rebellious? No, with that, your, that's what it was. With your coups. I know, right? I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm just know, kidding. You, you know, did. You did. The reality is, though, is that I fought. I continue to fight power. You remind me. You're like um. Don't I'm take mil- this to offense. You tell me no. if you. You remind me of like a punk rock song. Like, yes, that is you, true. You walk. You. you when I think of like anti flag and I think of black, yes. like those uh, punk bands from yes. back in the day, I that think so about true. you. No, so I am so like, punk fight rock. Yeah, against the power. Yeah, and and I, and when I when I figured out who the power was, it was just an older me. It was scary. So, uh, and I'll explain that. Like, so the leaders are just older people and wiser people, right? And so, so there's always going to be like bad leaders and good leaders and negative leaders and authoritative leaders, right? And what I promised myself when I started to become a leader is that I never wanted to become the people that always made me feel shame and guilt. Mm -hmm. And I never wanted to um, yell or scream, which... I broke that promise because I, I did, I, I only, I've screamed like three times in my life uh, to somebody and I, and I always felt shame and guilt about it. And I never, I, I hadn't done it in a long time, but when I did do it, it was, I was so frustrated at the person and I didn't know how to handle it at the time. And so like my leadership has grown to be more empathetic, more loving towards myself and then more loving towards others. Like, cause you know, those people that we always lead that always have something like, oh, I'm sick or, oh, I have this or that, or I was late cause of this. Um, I would let those people slide. And when I let it, when I let those folks slide, everybody else got mad uh, because I let that person slide. So other people started to slide and I didn't understand at the time why everybody else wanted to slide but it's that you know when you talked about the buffalo harui 
I thought about that a lot in my mind and like it gave me an aha moment right now that you know I was more like in my in my young leadership style I was more like the buffalo I was more authoritative because I wanted to control everything now you know you know Brene Brown says sorry I didn't mean to interrupt no. she talks about how that that's also like wielded in shame and guilt that a boss or like a leader could sometimes lead that way because you're wanting to protect yourself from any shame or guilt that you might get if the job doesn't go right exactly mm -hmm. and it, it wasn't necessarily over the job it was more me controlling the situation yeah and see right? the same i feel like the same thing happens in like not just the workplace like it could be in your relationship it could be with exactly your, like if you're a mom with your kids you're right. if you're um, if you're like a caregiver and you're you're taking care of people like you might want to control how everything goes down because yeah. it's like life or death or like are we gonna survive um so yeah like and then that's that's scary though right because if you're constantly leading in that way like I don't know that there's room for creativity because it's so nope. rigid you're so right about that crystal you're so right about that well, only because i listen to the podcast that's not <laughs> but but that's that's the reality is like that's how but i was going to say that how i gauge how i gauge if my leadership is being um is doing well is that people are being creative in the space that's how i gauge my leadership now mm, if there oh, if there's good. if there's if there's a decrease of creativity and fulfillment then I, I then I, it's about me and mm -hmm. I have to ch and I have to change as a leader and so that's what I do now is I see like how much creativity we had versus we don't have and like do people just do the job and go home or are they asking like Nelson we could do this better or we can move this around better or we could do it this way better and I think when people have a voice even the smallest of voices, right? And if that voice is heard, then you just get, you're just more fulfilled in your work-life balance, if that makes sense. I like that. Because I feel like in order for creativity to be apparent or kind of if, like happen, I feel like people have to feel safe. So if people are being creative, they're, be, they're feeling safe in that exactly. environment. Exactly, exactly. I also think the intention behind the leader is really important because there have been many like historical figures that have led like I don't know for example like Hitler he's he's led you know he led but was it for a good cause mm -hmm. obviously not right um so I feel like so the think intention about that. behind the leader is also important so th but think about that was he successful in leadership he was very successful right mm -hmm. but why but what was it why do you think he was successful in, in that in that style of leadership because you were gonna die if you didn't follow well not just that right he became the the ultimate supreme so like in all the germans minds like they were getting an unfair shake and so they blame the Jews and they blamed Europe for that. Well, that's that. That's the scare, the scarcity and fear. Exactly. But that's still, yeah, that's the authoritarian, like what she, yeah. like what Harry said. Yeah. Ultimately, if you're gonna go dig into it, you thought yeah. you were gonna die if you didn't follow. Exactly. And he showed you that by killing people. By killing people, and that's how he was successful. But it was, it's not sustainable, as we see. It has an expiration date. And so that's what I like. I want people to know, like, if you're going to continue doing that authoritative style of leadership, it has an expiration date and you might be successful in the beginning, but in the end, you know, what happened to Hitler? He killed himself. In, in the end, you meet your demise. And I think uh, what's important about, for me anyway, about leadership is how we look at the subtle changes in people's way of doing things. And like I said, the creativity piece. Um, that's, that's what I think about leadership. Uh, but I have, and I have, sorry, I have one more question. Is that cool? So what, okay. Before you go to the next one. Yeah. So 
for me growing up, you know, when I was younger, I was really sheltered. And so coming out of that space and like, for example, I was um, sent off to a different school that was a little bit further away from, you know, my area where I live. Not little. So, Two hours away. Well, so being sheltered and then going into this new environment, I feel like I did go through that experience of being a follower because I really wasn't exposed to a lot of things mm. like that growing up, you know, I always had, you know, and so being able to look at the different behaviors, different dynamics and things like that. I mean, there was times that, you know, I would be in a position of follow where it wasn't in the best interest of myself, you know, it wasn't the best decisions, but I think all of those experiences that I had growing up and being in that position at one point in time is what led me into wanting to be more of a leader because now I've, I, I have that under my belt. I've experienced, you know, good follow, bad follow, you know, mm -hmm. and those experiences taught me on what it is for me to be a leader. And I think like even listening to Harui and listening to her three key points as to why, you know, her leadership style, I can definitely agree with that. I can definitely say that I'm on the same page with that. Maya Angelou had a um, quote that said, um, uh, a leader sees greatness in others. No, a leader, uh, what is it? Um, a leader sees greatness in other people. He nor she uh, can be much of a leader if all she sees is herself. Yeah. And so I think sometimes with leadership, people forget and they play that whole authoritative thing and they forget that you have to lead by example. You know, part of part of being a leader is being able to to impact other people. You know, mm -hmm. it's being able to leave that mark on other people, sharing your wisdom, your knowledge, um, you know, leading with your heart, being kind. I think leadership a lot of times people are so stuck in that power position that they forget that kindness plays a huge role in that. Active right. listening plays a huge role in that, you know, because you're the mentor, they're following you. You, they have to lead by, you have to lead by example, you know? So I do agree with Haru's key, you know, three keys. And I think when being in a position of leadership, I hope the same, so. I think one of the things I'm always like, in awe with Momo is that you have this ability to be able to connect with any yeah. anyone like instantly and I always admire that about you because I don't you know that's somewhere where I, I really lack because I get shy or I get in my head but then I feel like you know many meetings that we've had with like clients or families like like you instantly make them feel safe and like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like she like has that sugar. on their side like that's I don't the word know. I was looking for last when we we're preparing for this yes. podcast that, safe that, that's yeah. why the little ones yeah that's round. a sugar that's a sugar that's a sugar bear right there that's what, that's what it is <laughs> yeah. that's the honey <laughs> I think a lot of that comes from my mom my mom is really like very very nervous and, and very grandma. protective mm -hmm. and my grandma you know very safe and you know what i mean they're they're like powerful women yeah but they play very powerful roles you know for me in my life and i'm just speaking from the women you know and having those different values and morals and things like that instilled in me i think it just it plays a huge role in my ability to give what i give and when i work with a lot of clients or just people that i meet and all that stuff I mean, I'm tough on the outside, but I have the biggest heart on the inside. I don't always want to admit that, but I do, you know? And so I think a lot of times part of my leadership is that I lead with my heart a lot. So, yes. That's the only way to lead, I, I believe. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Haru. Thank it's you interesting because you said this, Nelson, earlier about how all four of us like to be the cook, you know? Yeah. And it's we're interesting all... how we're all kind of navigating each the four other. of us mm -hmm. and i and i you know i figured out this year how when i need to follow a little bit in 2020 
but when I need to follow and when I need to lead. And I think, um, I think that's important. I think that's important for as a leader and to be a transformational leader. And, you know, and I think because I want to be the best leader I can, when anything that I do for some reason, I need to be the best, like in my mind. And I think that comes with the confidence too. Like if I believe I'm the best and I can be as confident as I need to be to handle any situation. So I trick my brain into thinking I'm the best, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Because when I'm not, when I don't believe I'm the best, I make a lot of mistakes. And, you know, I think that goes from my football, um, f football career, because I, I always wanted to be the best football player, wanted to be in the NFL. Uh, I, I, fall, I fell short, but um, one of the things I took from football was uh, repetition and like outwork anybody. And that's what I do. That's what I try to do in my work life and my, in, in my family life. I try to outwork anybody um, and be that person when they need me to be there, you know, and, you know, family like family is really important to me. And like last year, I didn't really get to see my family a lot. And so like trying to lead as a family member through like phone calls or like what's the latest and the greatest. And I think because, you know, like, I don't know if, I, I don't know if Mo, you can attest to this or anybody can attest to this, but um, like in my family, um, there's different leaders. Like my mom is the matriarch, like she's the main leader, you know what I mean? And then it goes, and then I'm like the, I was, I was the leader. I, I don't know if I'm the leader anymore because I have my own family, you know? Um, but I see like my sisters, lead, you know, helping my mom more now. It's like the women got closer mm -hmm. and like the men, or not, you know, me and my brother have have started to like build our own thing, which is interesting because I never thought about it that way. But as I start to build with my wife, um, it it really has been a different type of leadership and, you know, in, in my own home. And I, I, I'm still trying to discover all that because I'm not too sure how that's going to work out. But I'm really excited. I'm really excited to like, you know, maybe hopefully start a family. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. I think, I think it plays like just kind of piggybacking off of that. I think it plays on both sides for me because my mom, I would say definitely the matriarch. My dad was, you know, definitely provider. So I think looking at two different types of leadership, mm -hmm it kind of created this thing for me to take on, you know, the, the leadership, you know, within my family and be able to play those different roles. I think it comes definitely from both of them and kind of, you know, so it, it, it is, it can be very challenging and very stressful, you know, to hold down a lot of things, you know, or be responsible for a lot of things. But I think because my parents instilled those things in me, it made me stronger, you know, and it made me feel like I can take on anything regardless of how challenging it is for me. Mm -hmm. um, side note, another thing that I just thought about too, because we're talking about leadership and followers and it just really kind of sat with me. Okay. A lot of times people have, and this is just out there to everyone because, you know, a lot of people have this thing where they have this negative you know, um, preconception of being a follower, yeah. right? And it's like, oh, I ain't never gonna be no follower. I ain't no follower. But in order yeah. for you to be a great leader, everyone has to follow. Exactly. Because if you don't follow, what are you learning? You know, each everything that you learn that in, that that teaches you to be the leader that you are today. In order to have that, you had to at some point in your life be a follower. Everyone has to experience being a follower, whether you want to accept it or not but that's what makes you great. That's what makes you, you know, even when you mention how you have to take on a role and your mom had to work and all that stuff, but you watched your mom, you seen what your mom did. And at that point you were following because your mom was leading. And so when mom stepped off of that 
and you have to take on that, that's what that's part of what made you a good leader. Rather it being a positive or a negative, the influence, the influence and the experience as a whole is what creates your leadership. Period. That's right. That's right. I love that. Where um, do you guys, I think Nelson asked this earlier, where do you guys see yourself 10 years with your leadership styles or just leadership in general? 10 years from now? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. 37. I'm 37, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> so I'll be 47. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know either. I don't know. I just know that I want to be able to take whatever it is I learn in between that time and just either enhance it or make it something that's so organic and a part of me that it's like second nature. I, uh, can I go next? Yeah. Okay. So I was going to say 10 years from now, I want to be a little bit more wiser, um, more calculated and, I want to be, I want to follow, I want to follow uh, people that I believe in, uh, causes that I believe in, um, and I'm hoping to be a transformational leader um, at that age. 47 is a, is a good age to, to be a strong leader, and I hope that I have become somebody that people look up to and that, that, um, that people like being around as a leader, you know, because leaders can be a drag. It's very lonely at the top, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I fi- I found that out uh, at my last job. Like, it's very lonely. I think I'm going to be a thief in the night. Ooh, okay. And I'm going to steal Crystal and Nelson's and ball it all up in the one <laughs> because you basically said exactly <laughs> what I would have said, but I would like to add on top of that a little frosting. Um, I want to be my own boss. You know, I want to be my own boss. I want to be established, well established. And I want to be able, even at 40s, in my 40s, that being still a young age, I want to be able to say that I left a mark on as many as many people as I could. So you already done that girl. You do that I every day. More, okay. Like, you know, like I don't know, I don't know how to put it in the words, but I just I want to like like as Puri says, plant more seeds and like I want more leaders to blossom. And I mean leaders meaning this young generation that we have now because it's so far this way. Like okay. I want to and then not even myself but just people who hold a leadership title. Like I just want seeds to be planted and for these younger youth to just blossom so that we can sit back and say, you know, so. I feel you, I feel you on that, that's dope. What about you, Harui? Um, I'm not really sure either. I, I want to become a person that impacts people. Not that I don't now, but I want to become a person that can change the energy of the room because of my life condition. Like I want my life. I just want to polish my life so much that when I come into a room, I can just by me coming into a room, I can change the energy. Like I've met a few people that can do that and I want to become great. So I can do that too. Where do you think you need to grow as a leader? I think that's I, for me, that's really important. I'm I, and where do you think you need to grow as a leader? And where do you, and how do you think you can get there? I think I need to grow more and my, I guess, and my confidence in myself and understanding my abilities. I Sometimes agree. I get clouded and of course, everybody experiences fear. And I think sometimes my fear kicks in and I, as everyone probably does in their life, sometimes I doubt myself and my abilities. And maybe because that title was so big that sometimes it's scary. And sometimes, you know, I think my falls end up being vulnerable and vulnerability, you know, and sometimes that's a challenge for me, but I think confidence like feeling like more confident in my abilities so 
think for me, I just would like to develop more trust in others taking the lead um, and not feeling like I have to do things myself in order for it to be right. I think that's the controlling part that's toxic um, or can't, you know, not, it's not always going to work. Um, trusting and believing in my ability to, to lead in general. Um, Cause I feel like it's there, but not, it's not exactly where I want it to be. Just to believe that I, I can do something. I can learn something. I think my answer is both of your answers combined this year. I'm really challenging my fear. Um, many things that I'm fearful in my life. And so challenge like challenging the fear is one area that I need to grow in. And then also letting go, like letting, mm -hmm. allowing others to develop in their leadership too. Because I think sometimes I do have a tendency, just like Crystal said, um, I have a tendency to take over. I have a tendency to do it for, for everybody, just because I'm like, it's just faster if I do it. But if I just, if I do it for everybody, no one is learning and no one is growing. And so kind of letting go of that. And then I think for me, if I can master consistency in my life, mm -hmm. I would just be so much ahead than where I am now. So really mastering that consistency. That's a good one. Yeah, that is a good one. Yes. Yeah. Um, for me, I think what, what I need to work on is caring uh, more about uh, the company, I think, is important, um, and caring about the whole the whole mission and everything that's happening, um, because I care more about my me. You know what I mean? I care. It's all about me, 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 and I think I had I gotta be less me and more community, and so I've really I'm trying to work hard to um, to uh, not always like you know sometimes. Uh, I, I get in the way of of uh, developing those relationships, or I get in the way of of creating um, a sense of strength. Because, I, like Karu said, I will do a lot of those things because I can do it faster. But I think that comes with time. Um, learning how to in, like like I said in the beginning, like learning how to increase creativity is going to be the most important thing for me, and that's that's where I'm going. Like I'm going to see how that that's my hypothesis, and if it works out, then hopefully I'll be writing a book about leadership because that'll be my my piece on leadership. It'll be interesting to watch this ten years from now to see and, where and, we <laughs> where we landed. I know that would be cool. We should do a leadership podcast every year to see where we're at that would be dope for 10 years oh damn any other comments questions don't be afraid to be a leader i love that any Just closing remarks harness your own gifts and everybody has them mm -hmm. you could lead anywhere it doesn't have to be at an agency a job it could be anywhere someone told me um self-growth is kind of like stacking pieces of paper you know, every day, if you stack a piece of paper after seven days, you only have seven sheets of paper. But if you keep putting in that work and you just keep stacking, stacking and stacking, then after a year, you'll have 365 pieces of paper, which is like a huge tower. And so I think some people think it's overnight, but it's like the, the little things, the little efforts that you put in every single day that lead to big things. So there you go. Uh, I just think the, you know, don't be afraid to lead and don't be afraid to follow. All right, everybody, this is not in lieu of therapy. Thank you for uh, joining us. Uh, 211.org if you need services. And we'll see you in, in a couple of weeks. Bye. Bye.